Well, guys, I got an old FL, what is that? Uh, I remember, what is that, an FL 120 or whatever freight liner here with an N14. That somebody left, somebody adjusted the valve on this guy's truck, and he made it from Washington to, he made it from Washington to Weed, California before, before she let go. But uh, whoever adjusted the valves didn't tighten up the rocker, one of the rockers, and jammed the push rod in there and screwed a bunch of stuff up. So I don't have the support on it on the radiator, so I'm trying to go down easy with her. But, yeah, let me see if I can find a light. Oh, I left that one light in my pickup, which I need to charge, but I still haven't got the push rod out. Um, but I got the cam followers off, but here's the problem with the light. I don't know if I can get the camera and the light in there. I don't know if the camera is picking up the damage on that cam lobe. But anyway, the cam screwed up, and the push rod still wedged down in the hole here. We still got to contend with that. Fun times. Fun times. So we know the rest of the cam followers have to come off, and all the shit off the front end's got to come off because we got to pull the cam out of it. So let me get ready to go here. Okay, I've got to get basically get the fuel system unhooked from it and Okay, so This is a select plus n14 plus There's an n14 select and a select plus and all kinds of different things Okay, so let's get the fuel set off solenoid loose. Damn it, that wasn't very smooth, was it? That's not very tight. Oh, and I gotta run over and do king pans on the Kenworth. Okay. Gotta get this nut back on here with these gloves on the end of the glove. It's got a little wrinkle in it and it keeps wanting to grab the little bitty nut. Okay, suction line for the compressor. I got all my toolboxes locked. Dig the honey bun wrapper that I ate this morning for breakfast on the way down here. Dig that out of my pocket. Be able to just pull our looser right here. He found a cam somewhere, this guy did, somewhere down south. And it's supposed to be on a truck tomorrow on the way up here. I went and helped this guy along, and the reason this guy called me is a long time ago, he had a Freightliner Classic. See, he's in Washington. He's based out of Washington. He can buy these old trucks that have these old, more reliable engines in them. That's the reason he said he bought this, because it had an N14 in it. And so he's he's just running cheap is what he's doing. I, I, I didn't have any trouble last time getting paid for him or anything, but uh, anyway... If anybody's ever heard of the town of Termo, 
it's way let's put it this way it's in the middle of absolute nowhere out going towards old reno and he broke down out there and he had a freight ladder classic had an n14 in it and the jumper lines between the heads the o-rings failed on them because the screws got loose and it was blowing fuel out of them everywhere so i I took some jumper lines with me and went out and helped the guy. Can I just leave that alone? I think so. I'll just leave that alone. I still got to get this line off here, coming the fuel supply coming off the solenoid to the <sighs> kind of brings back memories of the old FL freight liners. Used to work on those things a lot. <laughs> Don't see very many of them anymore, though. Not not necessary anyway. I don't know how he can. I don't know how the California commies haven't screwed with him. But that's interesting. It's what amazes me about all this, guys, is you look at California's bullshit and how they supposedly are the leaders in emissions and all this stuff and it's the dirtiest it's the dirtiest filthiest state in the whole union i mean it just it just shows you that everything that they say they're exactly the opposite they're they're the worst at everything they do and you go down south to some of them towns and cities down there and you're just homeless and trash and shit everywhere i mean yeah, you're really concerned about the environment. You're you're so full of shit. You're, you're you're concerned about taking the freedoms away from productive people. That's what you're concerned about. <laughs> you know that old saying, "Don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining." That's exactly what they do. did not want to come out of there. Oh, of course that's tighter than hell too. <laughs> More to hold it. Maybe, no, I think it can work either. Got it. Uh, that little line tight enough? <laughs> Holy shit. You know it's an old, older truck when you see the air governors on the compressor still. Don't see that much anymore with these things. Okay, um, let's see here. Um, again, them starlings have got a nest made up under there. assembly with the compressor and fuel pump and all that on there 
as an assembly. I'm trying to remember if there was a brace on the bottom of this pump assembly. I don't think there is. Let's get the compressor out of the way and get the rest of the cam followers off of it. These are the things I was telling you that you have to pay attention to what your gaskets are in there because that basically that cam follower you're going to have the inner base circle and the outer base circle on your cam and basically the inner base circle is the flat lobe of the cam the outer base circle is the high lobe of the cam but what that does is that moves the cam followers in or out so the cam lobe hits it sooner or later advances or retards the injection timing and valve timing same both you know so it's important to have to keep track of the gaskets on these big cam 400s and these these n14s the n14 there was quite a few differences i mean but basically the n14 was still the good old 855 the 855 block that Cummins used for eons and then oh this guy he really really decided to tighten things up here kind of overdo stuff a little bit but maybe I can get that off right there but uh, I think those are I don't even know what size those are not one inch. There are so many variations of the 855 block. Um, am I going right way here? Okay. I remember back in like the late 90s, early 2000s, there was still a ton of these N14s, and there was a ton of Big Cam 400s running around. I mean, I just about seemed like most of the trucks you saw either had, I mean, it was pretty good. I mean, there was a lot of guys that run cats, that ran cats in this area. There was a lot of guys that ran N14s and and big cams too no doubt about it i got a short ridge here somewhere. okay i've got the darn radiator out of the way okay let's uh we got adjustment here for the fan belt jam nut get back of this off uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yep. She's a tight one, laddie. Dookie dookie. Duke. Hey Bob. Hey Bubba. Hi Bubba. Hi Dookie. <sighs> side of that or something? I didn't think there would be.
Okay, let's try this maybe. And get this in there. Hey guys here we are again I it's Monday morning I came back and uh, the weather was really nice last week but we've got a really good chance of rain today and it's overcast so I thought well I like I don't know I've just been soaking up that Sun I really liked right out here on this asphalt pad it was kind of nice when the weather was nice and it was just it was just nice to soak up some of that Sun hadn't seen it in a while but it's gloomy again, so I shoved it in the door because we're going to be tearing engine components apart. We don't really want them being sitting out there in the rain doing it. So, uh, it's in the process of trying to get this air compressor out. And I, I've got one of them special wrenches, but I don't... I'm having trouble getting on that one still. So, um, I, bought, I brought some more wrenches with me this morning out of my toolbox at home. That I don't normally pack on the truck, so we'll grab these S wrenches looking like things. I don't know if those are going to work or not. And then I actually have the wrench that's specifically for that, but it still doesn't really want to fit right in there. So I don't know. We'll try. We'll try this other style of wrench too. I don't know if that's going to work or not. But I got to get the air compressor off so I can get the, uh, so I can get, see, this is the wrench that you stick down back and behind there, and these are 5 8 These are metric, so a 16 millimeter should work as well. So will this go down in there? Yeah. Well, guys, you're not going to be able to see anything. I'm just going to have to fight this until I get this one bolt out of there. I might actually put one more bolt in here and suck it up tight and that way if i do get this one loose back there then maybe i can get my fingers back in there and thread it out because if i don't put one in here and then the all the weight of that starts sagging on that one bolt then of course i'm going to be fighting that one to get it out so we'll see what happens here so i hit a jacker quite a bit up in the air i got a big block across the front when you're doing that just common sense the strongest part of the pan is going to be right where the edge of the pan is so you know get kind of close to that edge with a two by four or something to support and spread the load out on the pan because it will if you just stick a the, the bottle jack on there you're gonna it's of course it's gonna you have a small surface area and it's gonna put a lot of pressure on a small area and it's gonna it's gonna dent the pan we fit a two by six or a two by four on top of the jack and that's how i do it and jack them up anyway um so I got the pan bolts out here, and we got all the front cover bolts out, and I had to jack it quite a ways up to get these two out and get past this front bolster here. So now, let's see if we can uh, get this cover spread. Do I have all the bolts out of it? Make sure that I'm not missing something here. Right off, I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Let me get 
this one in there and start it. Oh, I'm hitting here. That's no good. Don't be hitting the dowel with the. I was hitting the dowel there, so I got to get a different spot. I wonder if I can get on the other side now because this side's kind of staying spread. I'll get on the other side and see if I can get it wedged off of there. Let's see here. Let's get right around in here somewhere. Oh, these bolts are all gonna fall out. I was kind of trying to leave them in there. Don't know if that's gonna work out. It's gonna be a little bit snug on the front seal there. patient they're not as bad with a most of the time you can get these n14s apart without uh, disassembling the uh, you know pulling the front crankshaft so they'll usually slide off of there usually and you know, remember you're also trying to come across the, the seal on the accessory drive shaft too Think maybe we might be able to get you over here. Okay, there we go. I've got a new seal. I've got a seal installer and all this for the M14. You know, looks like I still got a bolt threaded in somewhere. What's going on? Are we just hitting down here? We're hitting down here, aren't we? I believe so. Yeah, I got to Something that's going to make me... See if I can come up just a little ways more and clear that. I don't know. What did that do for us? Here we go. Okay, so got down to the nitty gritty here. Um, there's our oil pump drive gear. Um, obviously air accessory drive gear here, right here. I'll have to get a new gasket on this front cover. Yeah, all right. Look at the play in that accessory drive, huh? But there's our cam, and that's what we're after, is uh, removing the cam. Okay, okay, so I got tired of fighting that one bolt. I just pulled the entire accessory drive and everything out as a unit. Now I'm kind of wondering if I should have pulled this fuel filter off. But is there anything else that I've got connected here? Okay, let's see if we can wrestle this whole assembly out of here. We've got the accessory drive, the air compressor, and the fuel transfer pump. This wiring harness around it. There we go. Wrestle, wrestle, Russell. What are we hitting here? Oh. 
filter. Kind of wondering if I should have pulled that fuel filter off there. Might have made my life a little bit simpler. Ah, okay. Camera even pick any of that up, or did I have it pointed in the right direction? Doesn't look like it. But there is that big gargantuan thing. Let me get it on the rest of the way out of here. Oh. Lay it on the drive tire. Okay, so there we are. I'm going to take these three bolts that I got here. There should be one that I pulled out here. Uh, I don't know what that came out of, but that's not something that I pulled out. That was something from a previous repair or something that was in there because that does not look like a bolt that belongs here. And it should be no, that does not belong there, so I don't know where. That is not something that I... Look where it's been. <laughs> it's rubbed. It's been sitting there so long vibrating that it's rubbed all the threads off of it on one side. It's a broken bolt that somebody broke, and it fell down in there. That's what that is. So. Okay. Get the rest of the cam followers out of it. We'll have to pull the cam out. Now there should have been one bolt. Oh, we're leaking fuel everywhere back here. Hang on. Making a mess. Did not realize that. Let's just saddle it right in the middle between the tires like it's a normal position where it wants to be. Yeah, there's one bolt. I gotta find it. I pulled it out of there, but see it fell out somewhere in the process of removing this assembly. Okay. Cam followers. Pull these two more cam followers. Somebody's replaced this one here. This is a newer looking cam follower box. Okay, let me get my ratchet. And I'll have to see what our gasket here. The other one was a 42, so I'm not sure they should all be the same. Cam timing, injection timing. Oh, this darn compressor hose. I'm thinking about getting a zip tie and tying all this crap up out of my way. What did I do with that socket? There we go. Yeah, some of these silicone net one on there. Probably gonna have to pull that cam sensor out so I can get on the one bolt there on that one. This is what I was talking to you about on one video that you had to... That was real brilliant, wasn't it? Butterfingers. Ah. But this is what I was talking about on the one video where you can't just stick any old gasket in there. You gotta pay attention to what gaskets you had in it. And there probably won't be any warranty on this because this guy is really trying to get by cheap. And I told him that you need to change all your cam followers with a new cam because you want to match up your cam rollers with, with uh, you know, the, a, good, a good way to do it is match your cam rollers up with a new cam. That way you don't have damaged rollers or anything like that. They're basically going to take out a new camshaft. But he didn't want to do it, so I said, well, you, there's no warranty. 
It's, it's all yours, man. You no warranty? I said, nope. Oh. And he was sitting there thinking about it. Oh, okay. I said, well, you know, that's your decision, dude. It's your truck. You can do whatever you want. But it will be specifically stated on the invoice that customer chose not to replace cam followers. So that's all on you, man. You got you got to cover your ass with these cheap bastards. I mean, because they will they'll they'll sit there and try to save a penny and cost themselves thousand dollars. This is one of those things. Why wouldn't you? You know, why wouldn't you just change them while you're there? To be honest with you, you're there. But what do you do? I guess we'll see what happens if we find some cam followers flake in here then we'll say you know we'll call the guy and say look you know now you have to okay let me go get a uh, half inch they've got a ground on it right here with a half uh, half inch size socket nut okay make sure you unplug your jake wires you need a little 12.7 Somebody did not have those very tight. I remember, 65 foot-pounds. Those are definitely not 65 foot-pounds. I mean, this guy, uh, this over here, I mean, I'm not even to it. I mean, the, man, they're really loose. I mean, this guy, whoever adjusted his valves for him, really did a disservice to him. They didn't do a very good job. Yeah, we did some, of course, some cooking and on the freeze-drying thing. And then, uh, then we watched some. Just kind of relaxed yesterday. Both of us did. It was kind of nice. Didn't have everybody whining about all their stuff being broke down. And okay, so they're all out of there. So why aren't you coming up? Okay. Okay, we're gonna have to. Persuaded a little bit, I guess, huh? Let's just pull on it with my hand here, and then maybe... There it goes. This guy here, a um, long time ago... Hang on, let me pack this out of here. Okay. How's this one? That one's stuck down there too. And then we just, we don't have to pull this water manifold and rocker box. We just need to basically uh, take a 9 16 12 point, pull these rockers right here, pull the rocker shafts off of it, and then. Uh, then pull the push rods out. Okay, here comes the train. Tension on the valve train. <laughs> Definitely gonna.
Oh boy, whoever this guy had to help him out did not really help him out too much. I'll show you here in a minute. I mean, all these connectors on the injectors, he, the Deutz connectors, he screwed all those up. Look at this. What in the hell did this guy do? Why? Holy cow. Wow. Look at that. Can you see that? Trying to get this one injector push rod out. Man, I cannot believe that guy did that to that push rod. Man, how do you go about doing such a thing? I don't even understand how you do that. No, I don't put the, uh, the injector push rods are different, but the intake and exhaust are the same. So just make sure the big one goes, the big short one goes in the injector slot. And you don't need to, all this big myth of putting the rockers back exactly where they were is it's just a myth. I'm sorry, I've done this thousands of times and never had one come back. I mean, obviously, the injector push rods themselves are different, so you want to put them in the right location. But you just can't mismatch the injector push rod with the valve push rod. That doesn't work like that. Um, I'll lay it with this head here. But look at this. Uh, he rounded off, rounded off the injector jam nut on the rocker. Um, this one's loose, wasn't even tight. So, has it been hammering on it and screwed the rocker up? Um, and then look what he did to the push rod here. Look at the push rod. Like he grabbed it with a pair of vice grips for some reason. I don't even know why you would grab the push rod with a pair of vice grips and twist on it like that. I mean, to damage it like that, he must have like screwed up and got it jammed down in there or something. I'm not sure. I really, I don't know what happened. This time I just kind of pop them like that and get them loose. There's dowels on these, so. used to work on a lot of these N14s. I'm gonna leave the valve bridges where they are. I don't really need to take them off. Okay, um, now, six more push rods and then we can pull this other cam follower out now that we've pulled our head out of our ass. I need to carefully look at all of these and see if this knucklehead screwed any more of them up. Don't see nothing wrong with those. Okay, now we're on to the other cam follower. Okay. And all the bolts I had to pull the cam sensor out so I could get on that one bolt and get it out. There's little kind of wedge points on each corner here. You can get in there and get these loose with. Works a lot better when you pull the push rods out of it. You don't have your head up your ass.
Yeah, these are the kind of guys, you know, they'll hire some some guy that's $40 an hour and they really think they got a screaming deal. Then they get down the road and, and then the push rods come out of it. And so they're cheap. They're cheap fix there and they're cheap labor. Cost them twice as much. He was trying to, you know, he was sitting there trying to, oh, how much that guy, how much that guy charged you for the cam? And I was like, dude, when I flat, I flat told him right to his face, I said, listen, if you're going to be a cheapskate and I'm going to have problems with you. I don't know you very well. And I've got regular customers that I deal with every day that I don't have to sit there and barter with and finagle with to try to get things done. I said, if you're going to be like that, I said, you can take this son of a bitch down the road. I don't care. I said, I've, I have no patience for you guys anymore. Sitting there trying to do me like that. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. The cam shaft. Pull the cam out now. So the push rod's not wanting to come out yet, so the cam won't come out. It's got it jammed down in there. I'll work it back and forth and get this bent push rod out. If I can get down in there somewhere and push it up or something on the bottom and this back here been really nice it have been right here but it's uh, let me see do I have a pair of pliers somewhere handy well I'm gonna fight this thing let's see if we can to figure out where to go here the wiring harness is in the way and Had to be the back one. Never can be a front one, you know, where you can get to it real easy. Such is life. God, can I get down on the top with a pair of pliers and get a hold of it? Man, I just can't seem to... Can't get on it. Um, let me see if I can find something here to... Hi, oh, baby. What do you know? Dirty? I've had to cut them in half before to get them out. Take a saw or something and cut them in half and pull the pan off. And I, 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 I'm serious, when they when they get jammed in here sometimes they can be a real fight trying to get it off. I got it rolled around to the flat spot of the cam, so. Is there, how tight is it? Can I get a bar? I wonder if I can get a bar. If I get a bar, maybe, and then maybe get, let's see if we can get it out a little ways to that, I'll show you what I'm talking about, what I'm thinking. If I get it to that little notch between the loads on the cam, I might be able to pull it out a lot easier. If I get it like, you know, let's say it's setting, it's setting here on this lobe. If we get it here in this notch between the lobes, maybe I'll have a little bit more clearance and maybe be able to do something. 
Huh, Josie? Josie, I know you want to help. She's always wanting to help, isn't she? She's such a helpful girl. She's so helpful. Oh, I know. You said you're just bored. You're just bored, aren't you? She's like, golly, oh, you got a ball or something around here I can play with? Actually, I do. I'd have to go out there in the parking lot and find it for her. Let's see if we can just pry this, this direction a ways. Get the damn thing to pop past that, maybe? I don't know. Ain't gonna do it, is it? Just isn't gonna do it. And that is definitely what is holding us up here is that damn push rod. Damn it. And she just jammed down in between the lobe. See, now it's got it jammed up against the head here. <laughs> what did I do with those pliers I had? <sighs> Wonder, could I, could I get a pair of ice grips on it? Probably not. Really trying to keep from pulling this head is what I'm really trying to do. Don't want to pull the head. Too loose. Hold of it, but it slipped off. <sighs> yeah, now I can't seem to move the. <sighs> Not happening, huh? It's jammed down in there bad. It's a bad one. This is a bad one. Now let's go back in with it. Now that I got a hold of it, maybe let's go back in with it here. Maybe that'll loosen her up a little bit. I don't know. Can I roll the engine around somehow and get it to a different spot to get it out? Is that possible? Or am I going to have to pull the pan? I'm on the flat lobe of the cam, so you'd think that thing would come out of there. I wonder another thought that's run through my mind maybe there's a throw on the crank that's which i can't really tell because i can't see past all the junk in the way here oh shit i i see it now it's curled that thing clear around oh wow yeah no wonder it ain't coming out uh i see the bottom of it it's curled that it's curled the end of that push rod clear over it was trying to wrap it around the camshaft when it went. God, can we beat that, you know, beat that 90 that way, maybe? Let's see if we can do something like that. Or 
the hell the hammer do? I can't see a fucking thing in there. Might have to pull the pan off. Might have to pull the pan off on this thing. You know what? What if... Uh, can we beat it down a little further, maybe? <sighs> okay. Me and Josie, we're getting her done, aren't we, baby? Aren't we, baby? Oh, yes, we are, she says. She says, yep, we're getting her done, Dad. Okay, so now I got it just a little bit further. And now I'm hanging up on... I'm hanging on the bearing journal, I believe. So maybe I'll go in just a little bit and maybe I can get that damn thing out of there now. Maybe. Let's try, try, try. Seem to get a hold of the damn thing. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm basically up to the bearing journal now. I wonder. Roll this around, or do I just need to go in a little bit, maybe too, and I can get to that one spot on the cam? Yeah, I need to twist it. Is what I need to do. think that bearing journal sticks out quite a ways. I don't think it'll ever come past it the way it is. So either it's got to come out. It's about all there is to it, really. Just keep finagling until we get her, I guess. I wish you could see from the top. Man, really... Man, it really tweaked that thing down in there. God, I don't think it'll ever come past that bearing journal. I just don't think it will. I don't think it's going to. Um... I think we're up against it right there with the bearing journal. Now, throw all the wiring harnesses and all the crap in the way here. See what we're doing. Maybe. That's exactly where we're at. We're up against. We're up against the bearing journal now. Damn it. Hmm. It's gonna come past it. This ain't gonna come past it. It ain't gonna do it. So, what are we gonna do now? We're getting there slowly but surely. Does it need to maybe... Let's rotate this thing a little bit further this way. I gotta, you know, if I'm gonna be twisting that, I gotta give myself enough room to where when I do try to twist it, it doesn't hit that bearing journal.
Hey. Something just fell down in the pan. I don't know what that was. It just fell down in the pan. So we're gonna find out once I get this push rod out. Something definitely fell down in there. I do have it twisted. You know what though? If I come back in with the cam. Come back in with some more with the cam. Was that the push rod and it fell all the way down into the oil pan? What was that? Though I got it past it. Move it right there. I think that the, just the edge of the push rod hit the pan. We'll see now that we actually can. Or something. It must be sagging on this last journal. <clears throat> oh, come on. Boy, you are just ornery, aren't you? Just ornery. All the way, Henri. Ah. Good old freight liner and their bumpers that you can't ever get around to get in between the tire and the bumper. You gotta love those. Push on out through here, maybe. Okay, I got the push rod out of there, guys. And the end of the push rod did fall off into the pan. But um, I know a lot of you guys are probably not going to like what I'm going to tell you, but I'm not going to pull that pan off because. Uh, there's no way that that piece of that is going to go through the pickup screen. It'll just have to bounce around in the pan. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Uh, it is what it is, but I don't know. I got to call this guy because, I mean, the cam bearings are worn. I mean, they're clear down into the bronze on the cam bearings. Let's see if we can get this light. I don't know, is the camera... Picking up, see how they're down into the bronze on the cam bearings? It needs cam bearings, like, really, really bad. And I guess I can see what this yokel wants to do, because he's kind of a cheapskate. But, I mean, you're, you're here. Why not put cam bearings? That last cam bearing, I'd have to pull the, pull the rear structure and everything off to knock it out of there. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll call the guy and see what he wants to do. To do it right, 
I mean, I've got a cam bearing installer and remover, but the back one is right up against the bell housing. There's no way to drive it on through. Um, unless a guy could get in here at an angle maybe and cut it and then remove it out. You know, guy might be able to do that and pull it out this way, cut the bearing with a die grinder or something in there. You're going to get metal all down on the engine. But I don't know what this, I gotta, I gotta give this guy a call and see what he wants to do. Okay, let's shine the light on this so you can see it. But you can see where the cam, where that push rod got up against that cam lobe and chewed it all up. And I finally got that stinking push rod out and there's that push rod right there. She's just 90 to the right over. It to, basically, it was just trying to wrap that push rod around the valve, around the camshaft. And then, of course, we got the other one here where the ding-dong decided. I don't know what he was doing there. Why Why would there be, like, vice grip marks? I don't know what that is. Looks like vice grip marks or something. I don't know. Very interesting. Yeah, so one of these buttons is laying down in there, and I just told the guy. I said, if you want me to, I'll pull the pan. He goes, is it going to hurt anything? I said, no. It's, it's not going to go through the pickup screen. Well, unless you had some ding-dong working on it, and he pulled the pickup screen off the... <laughs> you, you never know. Anyway, well, um, I got to go work on a backhoe now. Uh, I got to get going on that, and I, I called that guy, and I told him, I said, listen, you need cam bearings really bad. So, um, yeah, look how worn out they are. They're worn out pretty bad. Definitely. Oh, this one's past the bronze. It's getting into the tin. So, anyway, well, I'm going to pick up my tools, and got a bunch of shit to do. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, you know, I never say this. I never say this to everybody, but, you know, I guess I need to, you know, give me the thumbs up if you possibly can on every video. If you like the video, I guess. You don't have to. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. Uh, but, you know, I've never asked that before, and a lot of people say, oh, you got to tell people to do that. Well, I I just never did really do that. Uh, boy, really, really nice dovetail job they did here, huh? Good grief. Wow. Un it's unbelievable some of the shit you see running down the road. And this is the shit like this is the reason that everybody else that takes care of their shit has to go through so much trouble because of this kind of shit, you know? Just scabbing shit together and can't make it up, man. You just can't make it up. This guy here bought the truck, of course, you use, and he said, I've been trying to take care of it. He's out of Washington State where there's no really emissions laws. So he, he says, I buy these cheap trucks and I run them if I don't have to put too much into them. He says, I, I make pretty good money. He says, if, I, if, I, if I'm buying a new truck, and then I got a you know $2,000 truck payment, he says, I don't make anything. He said, the only way I can really make anything is I buy an old truck with a reliable engine. And he said, it, it would have been reliable if this guy wouldn't have screwed it up. So he said, I really can't count this as being a non-reliable part or something, So which I understand. So anyway, uh, all right, guys, I'm going to go get my other stuff done.